Alhamdulillah in the blessed month of Safar and from the knowledge of awliyaullah on the Shams al-Arifeen and the way towards the heart and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that Safar is the month of the cave and that Allah inspire within our hearts that leave that which shaitan worships and what he desires of his kingdom and run towards the kingdom of Allah and Divinely Presence, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that in that heart is the oceans of an hayat, the secret of eternity and that to drink from its fountain and to be from that fountain Allah grant that ocean and the reality of eternity and that alhamdulillah wisdom and knowledge to be dressed in this holy month and every month subsequent to that is a reality of what's now coming towards that Divinely dress and the Divinely presence is that Allah says, this, this way is a way of oceans of eternity and Allah grants Divinely knowledges and those Divinely knowledges they have to be dressed with hikmah and wisdom so that the servant is a balanced servant in their realities. And then we described the relationship between Sayyidina Khidr and Sayyidina Musa and the depth of that in which to tafakkur and contemplate every day of this month in the reality in which Allah want He want to guide a servant and to the servants whom they attained the rahmah means they, they have a strong connection to the presence of rahmatan lil alameen. The mercy of Allah is the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad That these servants whom attain that presence and as a result of that presence Allah taught them knowledges, Divinely knowledges, the knowledges that come through their, their soul and their heart and their being. The importance of, of that reality to be dressed from that reality and then how to accompany, how to accompany the path and how to accompany that way. Surah Al-Kahf is the adab and the surah of the adab of how to accompany heavenly servants, that they don't have the same mannerisms that if we were to take an external scholar or somebody from the masjid and say, okay well teach me Qur'an and teach me this or teach me that, it's a different adab, it's a different understanding, it's a different way in which to negate oneself and that's less than one percent will be guided towards that reality. The 99% are of the external, they go to the masjid, they go for Jummah and they think that those are the manners of Islam, the depth of the reality of the manners of the heavenly kingdom and the kingdom of Divinely knowledges then are extremely different, almost 360 degrees in difference on how the character is, how to have the character of humbleness how to have the character of patience, how to be patient through the conveyance of knowledges. When we say, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabbib al-Asbab, Ya Mufatih Abwab, Ya Muqallib al-Qulubi wa Nafsar, Ya Dalil al-Mutahayrin, Ya Ghiyat al-Mutahayrin, Ya Dalil al-Mutahayrin is the guide of the bewildered. So that's a, a reminder, a reminder that the immensity of that du'a that Mawlana Shaykh would inspire that keep making that du'a because the du'a that you make and this is, the, this is the reality that they're opening for the understanding of manifestation. So if, if they teach that you can manifest every type of negativity and every type of horrific thing, then imagine the power of positive manifestation. That when you say, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab and you make the du'as that they ask you to make, you make any du'a, what type of manifestation from the oceans of energy when it says, the one whom bestows, the one whom gives, the one whom gives, that these du'as that they inspire 
and the app has the du'as from the Sultanul Awliya of the heaven, the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Wahhab is the one whom bestows that when you keep asking, Ya Wahhab, Ya Wahhab, Ya Wahhab, from the ocean of reality in which bestows an opening for that servant begins to manifest from the name that you're asking from Allah the one whom opens, Ya Wahhab, the one whom gives and bestows means then that attribute begins to the only way to understand it we have to on, only talk by analogy because people won't understand that when the servant is continuously making that du'a eh, emergence of like a door for them begins to open and the attribute takes an existence and that attribute of bestowing and bestowing and bestowing becomes ever present with that servant. That the one whom gives and then the one whom who causes and has an effects of cause in my life, the one whom opens the door that means that in my life that every situation that begins to have a manifestation for every cause Allah is, is moving me to make a choice. Do I make a incorrect choice or I make the better choice? And then Allah provides Mufati Abwaab provides an opening and a door for that choice. Means these du'as that only Allah are inspiring with us to, to make, the du'as that Sayyidina Muhammad gave to the nation above all, the du'as that Allah has asked for all of creation to make, they have a manifestation. And the du'a that the servant is making begins to manifest in front of them and as a result that Dua is continuously manifesting and dressing upon that servant. That the one whom, don't change my heart, don't change my eyes, means that in this path of spirituality that keep bestowing upon me, keep bestowing upon me and dress me from these lights, dress me from these blessings and that what in this way don't let my heart to shift from my path, don't let any difficulty to come to me and give me a firmness within my heart and don't change my eyes, don't change the, the vision of my direction, don't change the reality of, and the compass of my heart so that it qibla would be in a different direction, that the heart would then be attracted to something incorrect from dunya. So means that the secret of this manifestation of du'as is that when we begin to make these du'as and continuously make these du'as they manifest the reality that's present with us that keeps bestowing upon us, keep dressing us. Because you asked it then that, that energy from that du'a it keeps directing towards your heart to keep the compass of your heart correct. Muqalib al qulubi wal absar that when you're asking, I don't know how to put it in my tongue because it doesn't make sense to try to talk about it. But the, the reality that Allah gave to us of manifestation is that du'a comes alive, its energy from Allah begin to dress the servant's heart that stay firm in the way of Allah You asked for it and you have now brought it into existence. And that du'a begin to direct the vision of the servant so that their internal eye and their internal heart is always directed towards Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad This becomes our companion in life, this becomes the, a, a reality of our existence and the reality of guidance. Not only the shaykhs are guiding, not only Allah guiding supreme, the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad from Atiyullah, Atiyah Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. And then the Ulul Am that are guiding but all the du'as that they ask of us to recite and all of the awrads and etiquettes that they're giving to us are manifesting for us. If we could see it would be like a fountain in front of us. And then that du'a is continuously providing 
for us that dress the heart, dress the heart, uh, dress my vision, keep my heart and my vision to be firm. And that's why we said, Nazar bal qadam that in our lives the nazar and the path are related and the nazar has to do with what's in my heart. What's in my heart is guiding my, my path and what's in my heart will control my eyes. So that which my eyes are, are trying to uh, attain in life, it will affect my heart. So then all these du'as they are strong manifestations of protection and they begin to manifest for us as a continuous guidance and support upon our path. And that's the power that Allah has given to us that these salawats, these zikrs, ayatul kareem that we're reciting all of them begin to manifest and its manifestation is what continuously dressing us, continuously blessing us. And that in our path and the path that becomes more and more difficult that we're asking from Allah that in this path of knowledge to take me towards the bewildered state that at every moment increase me in a level of knowledge in which I enter the oceans of bewilderment. That not to have just the same thing but in my tafakkur and my contemplation for Allah to expand the horizons, expand the understanding so that I can be bewildered by the oceans of Allah's infinite expanse that has no limit, has no understanding of limit upon it. By the power of those du'as it's granting the servant to be firm that, Ya Rabbi that increase me in that level of knowledge and grant me a firmness in which to stay present and stay with it. Because many may come across these knowledges, hear these teachings, hear something from this reality and run and run because it's not something they understand, it's not something that's digestible in their mind because it's not something that the mind can digest, it's only knowledges that the qalb and the heart can digest. And the servant then needs the firmness in their path that, Ya Rabbi grant me a firmness that as I enter into this ocean of unknown on this path towards Your Divine Realities grant me my firmness on my path and that my feet to be firm in that way to reach to those realities. And that's why Surat Al-Kahf is the etiquette, is the etiquette for those who wish to pursue Divinely knowledges. And that's why Sayyidina Khidr laid down the example from Allah that, don't ask me questions on subjects that your knowledge may not be complete. Means that don't let the mind to think that it has a question on, on a reality and that it doesn't understand it, this doesn't sound right, this doesn't sound right. This is a reality that's based on the heart and the qalb. And that's the, that's the reminder for myself that every time the knowledge has become deeper, every time the realities become deeper and those are in contemplation that when the shaykhs and the students who have been taught by that in the month that comes and every month they come in their contemplation, in their namaz and in their zikrs and in their processes the knowledges and the uloom become deeper and deeper and they have to have a, a firmness, a firmness within their heart that to have the patience for Allah to expand its reality and grant them uh, an understanding. We pray that Allah because of all the different things that have been coming out all the time and there are many different people coming in new for the first time, they click one day and they're listening and so we, we never heard any of these examples of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr We haven't heard these examples of manifestation, we haven't, nobody's ever talked about that. I don't think there's anyone you click anywhere where they understood the reality of manifesting because this was from Ikhra, Alam bin Qalam, Alam ma hi Alam that Allah will make everything to begin to manifest by your reality. That every knowledge of this insan will begin to manifest 
and Allah gave immense power in their hands and immense reality within their finger and their thumb and that their ability to hold the qalam, the power of that qalam opened upon this earth the ability of all manifestation. So anyone who says, what are you talking about kun fayakun, our existence is kun fayakun, every building you see around us now is because of manifestation, Allah didn't build it. Allah inspired you to build it and it wasn't here. 200, 300, 500 years ago nothing was here. So as everything is manifesting, the most powerful manifestation are those that which manifest for Allah That what power the servant has that when he reads Qur'an, when he reads Salawat and Nabi, what happens in the process of making Salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad that's why the schools of adab they teach you manners, right? Because one salawat upon the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet described that, my soul will come to be present with you. Right there is now a manifestation. So with durood al-sharif Allah is giving insan that reality of Prophet is present to be present with them. And not only present but conveying onto them, dressing them with lights, saying that, I will be praising you ten salawats back, ten praisings back. And what does that mean from an ocean of light that has no time? There's no one, there's no two, there's no three. That's dunya. In the world of light, what is ten? What's the relevance to the number ten in a world of light when there's no time? Time is hatta dunya where you have the earth, the moon, the moon and the sun. If I tell you in heaven I'm going to send ten lights to you, what does that mean? It has an eternal reality and because we don't understand it all they want us to know is the reality of manifestation. The one whom is praising and praising and praising and making du'a, many realities are manifesting in front of them and as a result of those manifestations they dress the servant, they bless the servant, they give the guidance to the servant. So the servant is not left as something empty that they left alone for shaitan to attack. That's why the reality of guidance is Allah go sit with these people from the world of light so they can astonish you with what Allah has given to insan. That the du'as, the recitations, the prayers, all of them they have an immense manifestation, immense power for the servant. And as a result those whom are reciting and sincere because sincere servants people want to understand that, what's the difference between you and him? Because there are people who say, there's no difference between people. But we just gave the proof. If the one whom all day long is drawing hor horrific creatures, making masks for movies and demonic things and the other one whom sitting and reading Qur'an and, and making salawat and doing durood al-sharif, just what do you think they're manifesting? What type of negativity one creature is manifesting and what type of heavenly realities another creature is manifesting. So just by the understanding of that we can understand that there are enormous differences in people. The one whom reaches sincerity every action that they do Allah grants it its reality that they make salawat with sincerity, those salawats are immensely powerful. That they, they continuously have the presence of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad with them, accompanying them. So when Allah speaks eternally, eternally to us and says, Shahidan, Mubashiran wa Nadiran is a description of Sayyidina Muhammad for those whom have ikhlas, if they have ikhlas and sincerity, shahidan because the ruh and the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad is continuously with them. 
So they are witness to the light and Prophet is always accompanying and dressing them. Mubashiran was said many times that because the light is there present it's Mubashiran dressing with beautific lights and beautific dresses, that's a manifestation. And Nadiran because of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because of their sincerity continuously guiding them, don't do that. That's not what Allah wants, do this, don't do that, do this and inspires within their heart of goodness and refraining from badness. And that as a result that can't be compared to normal people. One who reaches these levels of sincerity, what type of dress and light that Allah grant to them. So we pray in these holy months that opens and from this holy month of Safar open up the reality now coming into the third lunar month which is the reality of 27. 27 is the kingdom of Allah 27 is the gate of, of all realities. This, the surah in which Allah describes the kingdom of Sayyidina Sulaiman So means the month of Mawlid the Nabi Sharif is the month in which Allah is opening the kingdom of all the heavens. The reality of the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad and anyone whom, who acknowledges the Mawlid, who participates in the Mawlid, who supports the Mawlid and Nabi Allah opens that light within the heart of the servant. So that their Muhammadan light, the Muhammadan kingdom begin to open within their heart. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That du'a is for Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam. Oh my father who are in heaven, who said that? And who was he talking to? Allah is not the father of anyone. That's a du'a to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad They like it, they don't like it, welcome. They have to acknowledge your reality is opening on earth. The kingdom of Allah is coming and that kingdom is called Muhammadun Rasulullah That kingdom come and whose will will be done? Whom's the one who brings Allah's will onto earth and throughout the universe? The only one who carries the will of Allah What Surat Yaseen described, my irada and my amr are in you. Amr wa irada, right? Surat Yaseen is the heart and Allah's ancient Qur'an is teaching us from the heart is Surat Yaseen. And what Allah says that my amr, my order and my irada is within you, is, is within the heart of Prophet The amr is the spoken word for the king. When the king speaks it's the command of Allah throughout the universes. And what Allah irada and what Allah wants but is not spoken is the will of Allah only known to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammadun Rasulullah Thy will be done is the reality in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Means that Sultanate of Prophet is opening upon the earth and the reality of that Sultanate to open upon the earth and upon the creatures of Allah is by Mawlid and Nabi Because once the servant begins durood the sharif, begins the respect and ihtiram and tashrif al Nabi they begin to have a love and a respect. As soon as they 
participate in Mawlid and Nabi they're actually opening the birth of the Muhammadan light within their own heart. And as a result that light opens in the heart of the servant, blesses the servant, begins to guide the servant, begins to guide them towards every goodness that Allah wants and refraining from every badness that Allah asks us to abstain from. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the immensity of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and only by means of that love is our najat. Because when the servant has that love and everything they do wrong and every shortcoming they have, they know only love can save them, not their action and not their amal. The amal is all going to be judged. If we think, oh my, my salah will save me, Allah said, let me dress you, hold on, let me account for how you prayed. What was your intention when you prayed? Did you want to be seen by people or your prayer was really for me? So every action, every amal is going to be judged. So we, we don't count on any amal. But the only amal that has no judgment is muhabbat and ishq. And for ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad there is no, there is no judgment. Ya Rabbi all my actions may be deemed worthless to you. I don't pray as good as other people, I can't recite as good as other people, I can't do all the things of other people. But only my ishq and muhabbat can see me. How Allah can punish love? If we acknowledge to ourselves our weakness and our shortcomings, and I don't find any good in any of my actions. I tried my best all my life but with all sincerity I have this love in my heart and it's that love that drives me and that love that puts my head at the feet of Prophet that asking, don't let me to lift my head, don't let me to be from away from under your foot, that your holy qadam to be guiding and to be blessing and to be supporting. And so when Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jalani but the said that all awliya are under my feet. Why? Because Qadam Rasul that was not a boasting but that I support them and I'll keep them to be correct and to be good and I'll intercede for them if they should go wrong because these are Ahbab and Nabi they are the lovers. And they're like the children in Divinely Presence that you don't want them to be harmed, you don't want them to be in difficulty, you won't want them to be ashamed. So then they taught us our only, only salvation is love. That when we have this love for Sayyidina Muhammad and the expression and the proof of that love, the proof is in your actions that make that love to shine. That make that love to show. So when they see you, they say, Oh, you guys are Muhammadan. Yes, you're 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 very right, you're Muhammadan. That you have an immense love and that everything about you is carrying that flag and that muhabbat and that ishq and that love. We pray that Allah increase us in that love and that that kingdom's light to emanate from our hearts and that love to save us, our family, our community and all those whom come in touch with us inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>